Hello. Today's lesson is on converting units using dimensional analysis. There are other ways to convert units, um, but we are going to do this with dimensional analysis. We will be converting between the metric system, the customary system, and the apothecary system. So the steps for using dimensional analysis are listed here. First thing you're going to do is put the number in the unit that they give you and put it over a 1. Okay, so you're just going to take what they give you and put it over 1. And the reason you do this is because you're turning it into a fraction. Then you're going to multiply by the conversion factor. These are the conversions on that PDF file in CAMS. You have to know your conversion factors or you're going to be unable to convert units. When you multiply by that conversion factor, you need to make sure that the, the units are diagonal. So if you have cups at the top when you start, then you need cups at the bottom on your second fraction. That way you can cancel units. Step three, you're going to cancel all of the units that, that match. Then you're going to multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and then divide. And in the answer, do not forget to write your units. So, we have three tablespoons to milliliters. So, first thing we're going to do is take what they give you and put it over a one. And you do this again to turn it into a fraction. And you're going to multiply by the conversion factor. Okay? And the conversion factor you need to memorize, which is one tablespoon, is 15 milliliters. Okay. So when you're going to use this information in the fraction, okay? So 1 tablespoon and 15 milliliters and the key is that if you have tablespoons up here, you need to have tablespoons down here so that they can cancel out. And we're going to milliliters. So now you plug in the numbers you know. So I have tablespoons, so I know that I have 1 tablespoon is 15 milliliters. So you put the 15 with the milliliters. Next step, you're going to cancel units. So tablespoons cancel, they go away. You're going to multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Well, 3 times 15 is 45. And of course, 1 times 1 is 1, so you don't really need to multiply that part. Then you write your final unit and the answer. And that's the unit that's left over that you did not cancel out. Okay? So again, you take what they give you, 36 pounds. You put it over a 1. Okay? You're going to multiply sorry, by the conversion factor. Multiply by the conversion factor. So we know that 1 kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So you're going to make sure when you put this conversion factor in that it, since pounds is up here, you need pounds down here. And you've got kilograms. So I know that 1 kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So you're going to cancel your units. You're going to multiply across the top, 36. You're going to multiply across the bottom, 2.2. And the last step is divide. So I have 36 divided by 2.2. 36 divided by 2.2, and I get 16.363636. Now this is a rule you have to memorize. Okay, right here. So all weights are rounded to the tenths to the tenths okay you have to memorize this memorize it we will not tell you that you have to round the weight to the tenths place but you are to round or it will be wrong so all weight whether you're going to pounds or kilograms all weight is rounded to the tenths place in the final answer. So right here, you're going to round to the tenths place. So that 6 makes that 3 go up to a 4. Everything in front stays the same. Everything behind falls off because it's behind the decimal. Your unit left over is kilogram, so kilogram goes in your answer. So 16.4 kilograms is the final answer. Okay, so now here we have a third of an ounce times a milliliter. Now, for these, 
you have to multiply your fractions. So when you write this, you want to put, um, let me get the color, one third. Okay, you want to write it as a fraction, and the unit will always go on top because you're going to cancel. So this time you don't put it over a one because it's already in a fraction form. So one third of an ounce times your conversion factor. Okay, and one ounce is 30 milliliters. So we need ounces on the bottom so that they can cancel and milliliters go on top. And I know that one ounce is 30 milliliters. Okay, next step, cancel units. Okay, they're gone. Multiply across the top. Multiply across the bottom. Divide. So 30 divided by 3 is 10. And the unit left over is milliliters. So you have 10 milliliters. Please know that for your fractions, especially your thirds, six, nines, you cannot change to a decimal. Cannot change to a decimal. Okay. If it was a, like a half or a quarter, you can change it to a decimal. Um, but for th if the bottom number is 3, 6, 9, 12, anything in the multiples of 3, you cannot change it to a uh, decimal. So I recommend that you never change them to a decimal, even if it's like a half or a quarter. Okay, so now we're going to do grains. Now, grains is always written backwards. Um, grains starts with the unit first and then the number. Um, so when you write it again, it is already a fraction. So you put 1 over 6, and the unit goes on the top. Now, this one doesn't say there's two conversion factors for grains. Uh, one grain equals 60 milligrams if it is not Tylenol, iron, or aspirin. And we will specifically tell you if it is one of those. Most of the time, you will use one grain as 60 milligrams. So for this unit, you're going to, again, make sure, multiply by the conversion factor. And you've got grains up here, so grains down here. And you've got your 60 milligrams. Oops, sorry. Apologies. That should be milligrams on top. Oops. So I know that one grain is 60 milligrams. Cancel units, multiply straight across, straight across, divide. Write the unit that's left over at the end. Okay. Now, this time we have grains, but this time we have Tylenol, aspirin, or iron. And so this conversion factor is one grain equals 65 milligrams. And again, that's only for Tylenol, aspirin, or iron. And we will tell it to you. It will look like this if, we, if it's just a straight conversion factor. Now, for this, we also talked the other day about Roman numerals. You have to know your Roman numerals in II equals 2. So you just set it up. You take what they give you, you put it over a 1, and you multiply by the conversion factor. Now, down here, I have 1 grain is 65 milligrams. You need to cancel your grains. So grain will go on the bottom. So I know that 1 grain is 65 milligrams. Okay, and cancel units. Multiply straight across. 130. You multiply straight across on the bottom is a 1, so you don't need to put that down there. And you write the unit that is left over. So I have 130 milligrams. Okay. This happens um, when you get a mixed number. This happens a lot with intake, which is what we'll do this week. For intake, you will get a lot of cups to milliliters. Many, many, many times they will be a mixed number. So your first step is to change that mixed number into an improper fraction. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4, so I get 4 thirds. Okay, and this is now a cup. So what you're going to do is you're going to, again, take that fraction, because you can't multiply fractions um, with mixed numbers involved. So you're going to write that 4 thirds instead of putting it over 1. It's already a fraction. So you got 4 thirds cup, multiply by the conversion factor, and you have to know that 1 cup is 240 milliliters. Okay, So I know that I need to cancel my cups and you're going to milliliters. One cup is 240 milliliters. 
You can cross simplify, but I wouldn't. We're in, we can use our calculator now, so just trust it. So straight multiply straight across. 4 times 240 is 960. So, oh, sorry, I forgot to cancel units. Apologies. Next step was cancel units. Then straight across, straight across. So 3 times 1 is 3. Last step is divide. 960 divided by 3, and you have 320, and the units left over is a milliliter. Okay, last one. This one comes up quite often. This is where you're changing pounds and ounces to kilograms. You have to do this if you are um, have a baby, and the baby is 16 pounds, 9 ounces, but his medication is dispensed in kilograms. So there is a formula, and the way you would do it is you would take the ounces, and you'll have to memorize this. You take the ounces divided by 16. Actually, hold on one second. I want to change my number because of that. Hold on. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's get rid of this. Okay. So, and let me erase this. So let's do um, 12 pounds, uh, 12, 11 ounces. There we go. So 12 pounds, 11 ounces. So the way we do this, and it was the same thing I just said, but the 16, I wanted to make it clear. So you take the ounces divided by 16. And the reason we divide by 16 is because there are 16 ounces in a pound. Okay. So I have ounces divided by 16, and you get a number on your calculator. You leave that number there. Don't touch it. Don't round. Don't do anything. You leave that number on the calculator. Then you're going to take that number and you're going to divide by the number of pounds. Okay? And you're going to get that number on your calculator. Hold on. Let's see. I apologize. Again, let's do this again. Forget everything I just said. I'm so sorry. So I take the ounces. The first part was right. Ounces divided by 16. Okay, so you're taking your ounces, dividing by 16, and you're going to get part of a pound. You leave that number that's on the calculator. You're going to add back the pounds. Okay, you're going to keep that number on the calculator, and you're going to divide by 2.2. Then you're going to round. So, let me say it one more time, okay? And then I'll explain why. So you're going to take those ounces. You're going to divide by 16. Okay. Now what this does is right here, this converts the ounces to pounds. That's why you're dividing by 16. You're converting the ounces to pounds. You're going to take that number on the calculator. Okay. And when you convert those ounces to a pound, you've got part of a pound. That's what that number on the calculator is. Then you're going to add back the other pounds. So for this step, what you're doing is you're adding all the pounds together adding pounds. Okay? Then the next step was you're going to take that number on the calculator and divide by 2.2. And what that does is it converts the, all those pounds into kilograms. So for this problem, okay, we take the ounces and the ounces are, here's my original problem, so my ounces are 11. Okay, calculator, here we go. So we're going to take 11, we're going to divide by 16, because that changes our ounces to a pound. So I got 11 divided by 16 equals, now I got, uh, sorry, hold on, I typed it wrong, 11 divided by uh, 16, and I get 0 0.6875. Now you're going to leave that number on the calculator, leave it there. Now you're going to add back the other pounds. Okay, so I'm going to add back 12. So on my calculator, I leave the number there, and I put I, I do plus 12. Hit equals. And I get 12.6875. Now I got that number on the calculator. I leave it there. Okay. Now I'm going to divide by 2.2 to change those pounds into kilograms. So divide by 2.2. And I get 5.76. Okay. Now for this, all weight, all weight is to the tenths place. Weight is to tenths place. So the seven's in the tenths place, so that six makes that seven go up to an eight. Everything in front stays the same. Where's the dot? There. 
Everything in front stays the same. Everything behind falls off. And don't forget to write kilograms in your units. Okay. So let's do one more. Uh, let's say I have 9 pounds, 3 ounces. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is take our ounces, 3, divided by 16 because you're changing your ounces to a pound. So 3 divided by 16 equals. And I have 0 0.1875. You leave that number there. Now you're going to add back your pounds. So you're going to add 9. So plus 9 equals. Now I have 9.1875. And you're going to leave that number there. And you're going to divide by 2.2. Divided by 2.2. And I have 4.17, sorry, 4.1761, blah, blah, blah. So now, again, this is weight. Huh, to kilogram, sorry. So this is weight. So you're going to round to the tenths place. So that 7 makes that 1 go up to a 2. Everything in front stays the same. Everything behind falls off. And you write the unit at the end. So out of all of them, that's the hardest. Now, to be honest, for every one of these, you just have to memorize everything. You have to memorize the conversion factors. You have to, for this one, you have to memorize every single step. Um, you also have to know how to set up the problem and solve dimensional analysis. So all of this is almost all memorization. Um, that's why since day one, I told you to print off that chart and start practicing them. Because this is where we're going. This is going to be most of your quiz. You have to know all of this information. Uh, we will be practicing this in class a little bit this week. Okay. So I'll see you all soon. Bye.